All right. Uh, hey, good to see you all. Uh, welcome, welcome uh, to our weekly uh, youth meeting. Um, we can start it right away. Uh, JP, you're gonna. Uh, JP is gonna lead us in worship. Um, JP, over to you. Hey. Good evening, everyone. Good to see all of you. We are here to worship the Lord today. So let us focus on Jesus. Thank you, Abba. We come before your presence, seeking your face, Master. Thank you for choosing each one of us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for considering us. So great is your love, Lord. So great is your love. Dear Lord, we pray that you will give us that heart to love you back more, oh God. Dear Lord, you love us even at times when we fail. For your overwhelming love in our hearts that is being poured out by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, tonight, even as we come before your presence, oh God, we pray that you will satisfy us, satisfy our souls with your love, Lord Jesus. Help us to pour out our hearts before you tonight. Let us come before the Lord with that attitude to pour out our hearts, pour out our love before the Lord. Even when we were sinners, He loved us. He chose to love us. Let us stand in awe of His presence this evening. If my heart is overwhelmed and I cannot hear your voice, I hold on to what is true, though I cannot see. In the storms of life they come and the road again gets deep. I will lift these hands in faith, I'll believe. I remind myself of all that you've done. Time. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. I'm yours. I'm forever yours. Mountains high and valley low, I sing, I remind my soul, I'm yours, I'm forever yours. When my heart is filled with hope, every promise comes my way. When I feel your hands of grace rest upon me Staying desperate for you, God Staying humble at your feet I will lift these hands in praise I'll believe I remind myself of all that you've done And the life I have because of your son. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. I am yours. I'm forever yours. Mountains high, rally low. I sing out, remind my soul, I am yours, I'm forever yours. Love came down and rescued me, love came down and set me free, I am yours, I'm forever yours. Mountains high and valley. Sing, I remind my 
sing it again. Low came down. Low came down and rescued me. Low came down and set me free. I am yours. I'm forever yours. Mountains high, valley low. I sing, I remind my soul. I am yours. I'm forever yours. Let's sing it again. Low came down and rescued me. Low came down and set me free. I am yours. I'm forever yours. Mountains high, valley low. I sing, I remind my soul. I am yours. I'm forever yours. The Lord, when the road again ahead gets very steep. We pray, O oh God, that you comfort our souls and help us to love you, Jesus. Help us to love you more, O oh God, when difficult times come. Help us to love you more. Help us to cling on to you more when our heart is troubled, O oh God. tonight oh God there is no one like you in all the earth we just come against every idols that we have been keeping in our hearts in our minds which have become strongholds oh God and we pray oh God that you take it away completely Lord help us to keep you as Lord we pray that it is our prayer tonight that every idols in our minds and in our souls will be removed right now. 
and may you be the priority tonight oh god may you be the priority of our life all the days of our life oh god That you rise a life flames of fire I know that you hear is white as wool And I know that your voice sounds like waters Jesus, you're beautiful I know that you rise a life flames of fire I know that you hear is white as wool And I know that your voice sounds like waters Jesus, you're beautiful Beautiful. Come on, let's sing it out. Know that you rise a light, flames of fire. And know that you head is white as wool. And know that your voice sounds like waters. Jesus, you're beautiful. And I know that you rise a light, flames of fire. And know that you head is white as wool. And I know that your voice sounds like waters. Jesus, you're beautiful and know that you ride a light flame so far and know that you hear is white and your voice sounds like waters you're beautiful there is now like you Lord showed upon us 
even when we were sinners you loved us oh god and you still love us with your everlasting love your love is so vast oh god so high so deep and tonight we pray that help us to have one glimpse of your love lord jesus help us to have one glimpse of your face so that we can live forever help us to see you face to face tonight oh god as we sang today god we know that your eyes are like flames of fire oh god and we pray oh god that help us to have that one side of your face and i believe you're my healer i Yes, Lord, I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. Yes, Lord, you're all we need. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for filling our hearts with your presence and continue to speak to us master help us to help us to love you more oh god more than yesterday help us to love you more today god and help us to love you more in the days to come master thank you lord thank you lord thanks jp thank you for leading us in a beautiful time of worship Father, we we continue to revel in your presence. We want to host your presence well. But help us uh, open our eyes to to the meaning of those words that we just sang, Jesus. Jesus, you are all I need. But I pray that those lines, those words, will. be more than just the words to a song or of a song Jesus you are all i need that you are my deepest heart's desire father thank you lord thank you Amen. 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 Um, thanks, JP. Thank you once again for leading us in a beautiful time of worship. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining in. It's uh, good to see you all. Uh, thank you. Thank you for taking the time off. Um, but if this is your first time, I hope you are blessed uh, by the session um, by tonight. By tonight, got uh, tonight's word as well. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, but um, towards the end of the session we are going to have uh, going to break out rooms and uh, we want to minister to you all and uh, you are most welcome to stay um, after the word uh, we want to pray for you the core team members will also be with you all uh, you know in, in the break out rooms and we want to pray for you so whatever the prayer requests are uh, you know feel free to share it with, with you know in the break out room that you'll be put in Okay, so that's towards the end of the session. Um, all right, so uh, I don't want to take too long, but uh, let's just let's just continue uh, uh, with the series uh, that we started last week. It's a short one, um, and uh, it's on idols. Um, and um, um, I share this that you know this topic uh, has been on my heart since two thousand seventeen at least. Um, you know how God's been talking to me about uh, worship, true worship and false worship, idolatry, and etc. Uh, etc. Et um, but one of the key things that we looked at last week was that we, right now in this day and age, we don't necessarily bow down to um, 
idols made up of wood or stone or whatnot, but modern day idolatry looks very different. Anything uh, can be made into an idol. Uh, you know, one of the uh, statements that I said was, all statues are idols, but not all idols are statues. Um, okay, um, yeah, and it, it can be a good thing. And if a thing or someone, something or someone takes the place of God in your heart, that's an idol. And I shared about, uh, you know, my story and how, um, how a guitar, a simple, beautiful instrument, guitar, was my idol. Uh, you know, it, 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 it had all my affection, all my love, all my devotion, all my thoughts, my time, uh, everything for 10 months, 9 to 10 months of a year. I only thought about that. Guitar in itself is not evil, isn't it? Look at it, Balam. You know, it's just hanging there all by itself. But I gave that instrument the power to rule over me. Uh, you know, unless you bow down in worship to something or someone, that something or someone does not have power or authority over you. Uh, and you want to do that, and you want to give, you want to bow down in worship only before God, uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I want to continue on that thought uh, and conclude that a series today, tonight, on how, danger, uh, how dangerous it really is. But at the same time, how God is looking to partner with you, uh, you know, in, in this journey of life to change and um, and to change generations, really. OK, um, so I do not have a PPT uh, for tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, but I hope you have your Bibles with you. I would, uh, you know, all I want is that you have your Bibles with you and follow along with me. OK. Um, so I'll give you like 10 seconds, 20 seconds to just get your Bibles quickly. Uh, if you have your Bibles handy, say an amen in the chat section. The rest of you need deliverance. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, so I wanted us to go to the book of Judges, okay, um, tonight, um, for tonight's uh, word. Let's go to the book of Judges. Let's go to chapter one and uh, let's just be there for a second. OK, um, so we all know the story of the beautiful and the great Exodus that happens in the book of Exodus. People of Israel come out. God gives the Ten Commandments, the first two commandments. God is very clear. Uh, you know, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt make uh, you know, no other graven images. Uh, you know, uh, but I am to be your God, your only God. And we know that Israelites went ahead and broke all of that. You know, before God gave the third commandment, they had made a golden calf for themselves. Right. Uh, and uh, and we see and God is very clear. It says, don't um, to or as a paraphrase it, don't flirt with the Canaanites, right? Do not tolerate them. Don't compromise. Don't get along with their form of worship, with their word, their way of worship. Get rid of them, all of them. Um, but Israelites don't do that, okay? Um, they, they compromise. So uh, that's where we are at. So in the book of Judges, the context, the background right now is they've crossed the Red Sea, they've crossed the River Jordan. They are in the Promised Land. Joshua has led them to a part of the promised land. They have started entering. Okay, there's still a huge portion of the promised land uh, that yet to be captured. Okay, uh, so remember this: what the only commandment God gave them was, uh, you know, don't uh, you know get into their uh, don't uh, get into their form of worship. Don't get into their don't bow down and worship to their gods. That's the command. But the Israelites don't do that. Okay, let's look at uh, Judah. Uh, sorry, Judah <laughs> judges. Okay, Judges chapter 1, let's go to verse 19. I'm just going to give a few verses here and there. So, um, Judges chapter 1, verse 19, I hope you're there. It's an easy book to find. Okay, so here what it says, The Lord was with men of Judah. They took possessions of the hill country, but they were unable to drive the people from the plains because they had iron chariots. Okay, uh, this might be a, a strange verse to uh, underline, but I would ask you to underline, okay? <laughs> um, 
they failed to drive those people okay that's one let's go to verse 21 the benjamites however failed to dislodge the jebusites who were living in jerusalem to this day the jebusites live there with the benjamites um, all these ites right uh, <laughs> were the natives of you know of the uh, of that land the land of canaan uh, let's come down to verse 27. Okay, Judges chapter 1, verse 27. But Manasseh did not drive out the people of Beth Shan, or Tanakh, or Dor, or Ibliam, etc., etc., from the Canaanites. For the Canaanites were determined to live in that land. Okay, under the underline that, that line. Okay, for the Canaanites were determined to live in that land how many of us know that uh, the enemy is determined to destroy your life okay um, they were determined to live uh, anyways let's go on verse 28 when israel became strong they pressed the canaanites into forced labor but never drove them out completely that was verse 28 they pressed the Canaanites, okay, they oppressed them into forced labor, but never drove them out completely. Okay, same thing with verse uh, no, verse 29, nor did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites living in Gezer, but the Canaanites continued to live among them, live there among them. Verse 30, neither did Zebulun drive out the Canaanites. Verse 31, nor did Asher drive out those living in, in Akko or Sidon. Verse 33, neither did Nephtali drive out, the, drive out those living in Beth Shemesh or Beth Anath. But the, uh, the Nephthalites too lived among the Canaanites inhabitants of the land. Okay, you see, tribe after tribe, after tribe, after tribe, failed uh, to drive out their enemy. When God was very clear, to drive them out. Uh, do not give them a foothold, but they, do, they did not listen. They failed. Okay. Um, let's come, to, uh, let's go to chapter two, Judges chapter two. Let's come down all the way to verse 10. Okay. Judges chapter two, verse 10. Are you guys with me? Yes, so far. Okay. okay by faith, I shall proceed. Judges chapter two, verse 10. This is one of the uh, saddest verse passage of scripture in the Bible. It says, after that, whole generation had been gathered to their fathers. That means a whole generation had passed. Another generation grew up who, need, who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Okay. Another generation grows up, they did not know who the Lord was or what he had done. What happened? Verse 11, then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. Baals Baal was the God of the Canaanites. They forsook the Lord, the God of their fathers, who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of the peoples around them. They provoked the Lord to anger because they forsook him and served Baal and the Ashtoreth. In his anger against Israel, the Lord handed them over to the raiders who plundered them. He sold them to their enemies all around. It's a very interesting passage of scripture there. Verse 10, when, when the new generation grew up, they did not know the Lord and what he had done. So two things, right? It's scary. If you do not know the Lord and if you don't remember what God has done, it is possible for you to slip into idolatry. Okay. Um, dangerous 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 uh, so this is the context this is the pattern of the book of judges okay uh, the whole generation comes up they they commit evil in the eyes of the lord um, and 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 they cry out for repentance god forgives uh, you know and they have peace in the land so this is the context so one of the judge that i wanted to talk about today from uh, from an individual perspective was 
Gideon. Okay, so can we go to Judges chapter uh, 6, please? Okay, Judges chapter 6. So it seems, again, like a strange name for a book, okay, Judges. It's, like, you know, it's, it's a very dangerous word to use these days. It's like, don't judge me. You're quick to judge. Uh, you know, I'm not judging. You know, judging. Who are you to judge me? <laughs> it's not that. Okay, so the meaning behind this uh, in their context was a judge. Uh, means a deliverer or a savior or, or a leader okay that is the meaning in their context okay so uh, there were several judges that, uh, that God raised to deliver to to lead the people of Israel uh, out of the bondage okay so judges chapter 6 uh, one of the leader uh, is Gideon uh, let's read from the last verse of the previous chapter okay chapter 5 verse 31 I hope you guys are following with me. Um, Judges chapter 5, verse 31. It's the last verse before leading into uh, chapter 6. So it says, So may all your enemies perish, O Lord, but may they who love you be like the sun when it rises in its strength. Notice that last line. Then the land had peace 40 years. For 40 years, okay? The land had peace by the way if you read the previous chapters that's the pattern okay uh, they committed evil god forgives and the land had peace they committed evil uh, they repented the land had peace that's the pattern by the way or oh, it's the same here as well okay so the land had peace for 40 years imagine that imagine that for 40 years okay then going to verse 1 of chapter 6 again the israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites because the power of the Midian was so oppressive I'm in verse 2 the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts caves and strongholds whenever the Israelites planted their crops the Midianites, the Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. Okay, that's verse 3. Guys, uh, pay attention, guys. Okay, verse 3. Whenever, okay, whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and the surrounding nations invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. These same people, guys, that they agreed to, you know, just let them live with them in their land. The same people that they tolerated is now oppressing them. There was a time they thought, okay, these people, okay, these the enemies, they're not going to be a threat because we are large in number. But guess what happened? The same thing that they tolerated is now oppressing them. And look at that. Just imagine, okay, with me. Seven years, you're not having a decent meal. I don't have a decent meal for one time, then uh, I stay. <laughs> right? Is anybody else like that with me? <laughs> if you don't have a decent meal like that one time of the day, then yeah, I become a really bad person. <laughs> but imagine for seven years, anything they planted, anything they grew, their livestock destroyed just destroyed, ruined. Let's, let's move on, okay? Verse 7, okay, Judges chapter 6, verse 7. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who says, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, I brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them from you before you and gave their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. 
do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. You know, it's one of the interesting things um, is in verse seven, uh, verse eight, he sent them a prophet. It's, it's awesome that this prophet does not have a name. Okay. Uh, it's amazing that this prophet doesn't have a name. Uh, I've said this before, you know, I was raised in a Christian Pentecostal family. Okay. And now if you wanted a man of God to come and pray for you, or, you know, give you a word of knowledge or some prophecy, some prophet to come, that prophet better be famous. You are not going to bring in some nameless, faceless prophet to come and, you know, minister. No, it was not the case. That is still not the case everywhere, you know, especially in India, at least in South India. <laughs> but what's amazing here is that this prophet does not have a name. Uh, I'm sure he or she had a name. It's just not mentioned here. But I like that. Um, now, the stage is set uh, for God to, you know, show who he really is. Then in verse 11, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash, the Abizrite, the son of, uh, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Sorry, let me just, okay. yeah, verse 12. It says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. It's amazing that, you know, God shows up. He does not negotiate with the hopelessness the, of, of Gideon's situation. He does, you know, he's like, oh, oh man, I'm so sorry, you know, to see you like this, you know, threshing wheat in the white place. You're not supposed to do this here. You're in the wrong place. No. He doesn't address any of it. He comes into the scene, directly calls Gideon, mighty man of valor. Because God does not negotiate with hopelessness. Uh, you know, when he shows up, every scene is changed into full of hope. Um, and then, I mean, just to make the long story short, uh, you know, we all know what happens. Uh, you know, Gideon has a bunch of tests. Uh, to God is like, no, I don't want to do this. How will I do this? You know, I, I come from a clan of the weakest clan. I'm not very famous. I am the least among my household and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then, uh, you know, God convinces him and then he decides, he agrees. You know, I always think God, you know, this way. You know, there were days uh, we went out and played cricket, whatnot, or basketball, or Okay, there were two guys, two strong guys who will pick a team, right? Like, they'll, uh, it's like I choose this fellow. They, that's all, you know, they'll hit their hand and I choose that fellow, okay? So the captain will always choose the the other person, you know, who's the strongest. Like, okay, he can jump well, he can feel well, he can bat well, he can, you know, the strongest all-rounder in the field. God is like, will choose a person who's not even interested in the game, who's somewhere sitting outside, you know, minding his own business, looking at the sky, say like, I want you to be my captain. <laughs> That's the scenario here with Gideon, okay? Because like, I choose you and I want you to be my captain. Uh, and that's who God is, isn't it? Uh, and again, to make the long story short, uh, God says, okay, now you are going to lead the men an army to fight against the Midianites and whatnot, right? Um, but here's the thing, right? I want to just pause here. So God has addressed Gideon with a different identity. You are a mighty man of valor. You guys with me? Okay. And he said, he's, he showed before Gideon a new destiny, a plan, a promise that God has for him. But before Gideon goes into battle, before he does anything else, this is what God tells him to do next. Let's go to verse 25. Okay, Judges chapter 6, verse 25. That same night, the Lord said to him, take the second bull, from your father's herd, the one seven years old, tear down 
tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Once you've destroyed that false altar of worship, verse 26, then he says, then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height, using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down off of the second bull as a burnt offering. So just want to pause there, guys. Before God tells him to, you know, this is the God's given him the blueprint of his destiny. This is your life. This is my plan for you. I have this plan for you. You are my leader. You are my mighty man of valor. Okay, you are going to rescue these people, your people of Israel, from these uh, oppressors. But before you do any of it, before you start waging your war, I want you to go and destroy a false altar of worship. And I want you to build a true altar of worship. This actually tells me something else that the altars were known as the place of worship a lot in the book of Genesis. And it's in the book of Exodus we see that Moses, God tells Moses to build a tabernacle, a meeting place. And in the book of Judges and in the first and first Samuel and second Samuel, uh, first Samuel mostly, we see that the people have neglected the tabernacle. That means they neglected the presence of God. And in first Samuel chapter four, we see that again the Canaanites. Uh, you know, taken to uh, custody the Ark of the Covenant, which symbolized the presence of God. And in the early part of the book of Judges, we see that they did not, when they neglected the presence of God, they said, we don't want God, we don't need the tabernacle, we don't need. And so they come back into this form of worship where they build altars. Um, and that's exactly what's happening here, guys. Um, you know, I hope you guys are with me. You know, the promised land to the people of Israel, you know, it was it was supposed to be another garden, like another garden of Eden, where there was no flaw. Uh, it was just full of life, full of God. Uh, it was, uh, th there's so much of uh, uh, metaphors that God uses uh, in the Bible for the promised land. It was supposed to be a, a beautiful vineyard, God's own vineyard. Uh, and actually, I'm reminded uh, in, in Song of Songs, chapter 2, I forget uh, which verse, Song of Songs, chapter 2, uh, the, the author says, you know, get rid of all those tiny foxes that ruin the vineyard. Uh, foxes were known as pests. Uh, they, con they were considered as pests. They were sly, you know. It's, they, were, they were not huge like a lion or a bear that come destroying. They're very sly, cunning, small, okay, that, you do, that you might not notice even. And they would destroy the vineyards. Actually, in, uh, in in the book of Judges, chapter 15, uh, Samson uses 300 foxes to destroy the vineyards of the uh, of the Philistines. Uh, what, what I'm trying to say is our idols can be as as you know such as small as the, the foxes, which can be easily ignored, looked over. But they are the ones that can destroy the vineyard of God that you share with him. Uh, the, the, the smallest things, I don't know what they are. You know it. Only you know what those idols that you've built up for yourself. The things that you have tolerated for so long in your life is oppressing you. You compromised. Um, you said, Chaltair. It's okay. It's just, you know, it's just that. It's all that. Because you compromised, because you tolerated the enemy, you know, the same enemy that you tolerated is oppressing you. But guess what? There is redemption. There is a plan. Break down those altars of false worship. And build an altar of true worship because that's what the father seeks isn't it john chapter 4 father seeks true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth um 
God has a God has a plan. God has a destiny prepared for you guys. There are 38, 37, minus 38 of us. You know, you if you as an individual break the altars of false worship, God will use you to deliver an entire generation. Gideon was one man. God doesn't tell all his 300 men to go and break the altars of false worship. God tells Gideon, you break the altar of false worship. And because he did that, because Gideon agreed to work with God, to partner with him, an entire generation was blessed because of that. So God is not asking you to destroy the altars of false worship only for yourself. Yes, you will benefit off it, but there is a generation out there, a generation of young people, like we read in Judges chapter 2, a generation that does not know God, neither do they know what he did. There is an entire generation out there dying because they do not know who this God is and what he's done for them, that he's died on the cross for them. They do not know. God wants you to be his Gideon. God wants you to be his mighty man and woman of valor. The question is simple. Will you be? Will you tear down the altars of false worship? Amen. Uh, in that, we conclude the series of um, idols. Um, let's pray, guys. Father, we come before you. We bow down before you, Lord. For, for a long time, we've bowed down to, to the gods of this world. We've given them authority to rule over us. Holy Spirit, tonight... We surrender. Okay, wherever you are, I'd like you to say, I surrender. I surrender, God. I will no longer bow to the gods that was made by human hands. I will no longer bow to the desires of my flesh to rule over me. I will bow down in worship before the only true God who died and rose again for me. So tonight, Lord, I know who you are and I know what you've done for me, for us. I thank you, Lord, that you Come and call us as men and women of valor, God. Holy Spirit empowers us to live a life that is pleasing to you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to pause the, stop the recording here.